Some Things Change, a short story written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's website. Perth, Western Australia, 2023. It's only early spring, but I'm starting to sweat in Mum and Dad's back garden. I wore my dark English suit for Dad's funeral, and if etiquette permits it wakes, I'd like to slip off the coat. Looking around the garden for guidance, I struggle to recognise elderly aunts and uncles, or my fellow middle-aged cousins, and I have no hope of placing their children and grandchildren. Hi Steve, a voice says behind me, and I turn to see Jenny. It's 30 years since our farewell dinner in England, and although we keep in touch on Facebook, seeing her in person, instead of in a post, feels different. Her short cropped hair is dyed purple, the freckles have faded, and her face is lined, like mine. But I'd recognise Jenny, sitting at the back of the church, and hoped we'd catch up. We exchange hugs and pecks on the cheek, and she adds, I'm sorry about your dad. It wasn't unexpected, I reassure her. And I guess we've reached that stage in our lives where we start farewelling the older generation and step into their orthopaedic shoes, Jenny observes. We laugh. (laughs) And I recall our nights of philosophical debate and dark humour over cheap red wine in my London flat. Would you like a drink? She asks, reading my mind. I nod and we head to the refreshments table on the patio. As we walk, I tell Jenny about my divorce and she tells me about her recent marriage to her long-term partner, a woman she met while working for an Indigenous land council. Congratulations, I say, clinking Jenny's wine glass. It seems Australia has changed for the better in 30 odd years. Thanks, she replies, but the marriage equality plebiscite wasn't all smooth sailing. And there are those in the broader population, and within our family, who still don't accept the result or same-sex marriages. That's a shame, I say, appreciating why Jenny sat at the back of the church, separate from the family at the service. We turn towards the garden with our drinks, and I muse, It's like that pretender's song. Some things change, some stay the same. You remember books and songs? Jenny asks with a faint smile. Of course, I reply but not the song titles and all the lyrics. We laugh. (laughs) And then Jenny explains, Some things have changed in Australia, but others have stayed the same. The fear of change, for instance. And those who spoke against same-sex marriage as the beginning of the end of Western civilization are now lining up to oppose the referendum for a First Nations voice to Parliament. We sip our drinks, and I replay in my head the conversation with the airport taxi driver, who had asserted in his rear vision mirror that the referendum was a conspiracy to undermine Australia's sovereignty. That's also a shame, I say, because I've been thinking of returning to Australia. Jenny raises an eyebrow and asks, After all this time, why? Well, in addition to the divorce, after Brexit, England and Great Britain don't seem so great nowadays. I've never known the country to be so divided, and it's not just my befuddled memories of yesteryears. But the country should be rejoicing. You've got a new king, Jenny teases. We've got a new king, I counter, and we laugh. (laughs) And clink glasses again. Like our old nights in my London flat. Mum's going to need help too, I add, and it's not fair to leave that responsibility to my brothers. I never planned to be away for so long when I set off on my gap year. But as you discovered, life doesn't work out the way we plan. No, (laughs) Jenny laughs. (laughs) Mine was more like a two-year gap. (laughs) And lastly, despite what you've said, I like the changes I've observed here from afar. Australia's become more multicultural. There's marriage equality and finally a chance to recognise Indigenous Australians in the Constitution and give them a voice in their own affairs. I pause to take a sip before adding. And after all these years, I'd like to be part of that. Jenny smiles and clinks my glass. We could do with your enthusiasm and support, because even if the referendum succeeds, there's a long road of truth-telling and reconciliation and repair ahead. An old memory surfaces, and I ask, have you ever searched for the Aboriginal girl who disappeared from your school? No, Jenny says, turning to stare out of the garden. I've had access to the records at various times, but I decided it wasn't my place to look for her, and whatever I found would have been for my benefit, not for her or her family's. However, whenever I see a young Indigenous girl, I think of her and her brother. We say nothing for a moment, and then I confess. Sometimes I feel how my brain works, as Mum used to say, is a blessing, 
It helps me forget the baggage in my life and remember the parts that matter, like books and songs and a special cousin. Jenny smiles and I clink her glass. But, I continue, I've never forgotten what I learned from books and documentaries about the true history of Australia and how angry and ashamed it made me feel, like you, in 1992. So I hope the yes vote succeeds and we're celebrating with Indigenous Australians after the referendum. Hear, hear, Jenny concurs, and we clink our near-empty glasses. Across from us, the younger girls and boys have kicked off their shoes and are climbing a tree in Mum's garden. See, Jenny says, nodding at the kids. Some things change, some stay the same. We laugh (laughs) and return to the table to refill our glasses. Hi. I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's Website. I wrote Some Things Change in May-June 2023 as my submission for the Big Issue Fiction Edition and drew inspiration for the three-part short story from my life. Like my first-person narrator, Steve, in episode 79, Perth, Western Australia, 1979, I grew up in Perth in the 1960s and 70s, and as he did in episode 80, London, England, 1992, I moved to England in the 1980s and lived there during the 1990s. During this time, I embarked on a long and ongoing journey of learning the true history of Australia and my country's troubled relationship with Indigenous Australians. Further inspiration for the story, particularly this third vignette, Perth, Western Australia, 2023, was joining the campaign for an Indigenous voice to Parliament in May 2023 and reading more about the discrimination and disadvantage of Indigenous peoples. When I wrote the story, like Steve in this episode, I had high hopes the referendum to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the Constitution and afford them the respect of a representative voice to Parliament on matters affecting their people would succeed. But I should have paid more attention to my other main character, Jenny, who warns Steve, while some things have changed in Australia, others have stayed the same. I was deeply involved as a volunteer with the Vote Yes campaign for the Voice to Parliament and worked long hours on pre-polling and referendum day booths. The misinformation and lies I heard on the streets and read on social media about Indigenous peoples shocked me, and the resounding defeat of the referendum proposal shamefully suggests that Australia is, as Jenny observed in London 1992, stuck in a 1970s mindset about Aboriginal people. And, as she said in this episode, fearful of change. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from episode 79 to 81 of Some Things Change. You can read this and all my short stories, blog posts and other writing at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy my short story collections from the Amazon Kindle, Apple Books and Kobo online bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The next episode of Tall and True Short Reads will be released shortly. In the meantime, check your feed or the podcast website tallandtrueshortreads.com for earlier episodes from seasons one to four. And follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it via your favourite podcasting app. Doing so helps me share my storytelling. You can support this podcast financially by making a small one-off or regular donation via the ACAST supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. Finally, please tell your family and friends about Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writers website. (laughs) 